Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Chris Drizic, who's the Old Sabre Superintendent of Schools. Hello, sir. Hey, Pete. Good How to see you. How are you, again. buddy? Good. How are you? Good. Well, welcome officially. Thank you. Last time we were together, it was a couple days short. Uh, yeah, it was about three days before I officially started, so... I'm officially here now. There you go. Well, welcome. Thank so you. tell us a little bit about your background and how you got in the education system. Sure. Uh, so I came to Old Saybrook after spending the last 20 years or so in the Enfield Public Schools. Okay. And I was the superintendent for the previous seven. I was the deputy superintendent for five before that. I was the HR director. I used to be a kid that I had every job there except custodian. But, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but it's, it was a community that I spent, like I said, nearly 20 years of my career in. It's a great town. It's a great, lot of great friendships. Um, but you know, like anything, it was after 20 years, kind of looked at it and said, you know, maybe it's time for a change. And the stars aligned because I always said, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to go to a place kind of like Old Saybrook, but never thought that would open. And <laughs> lo and behold, it, my daughter let me know it was open, and here I am. There you, there you go. Now, as far as comparison goes, Enfield to Old Saybrook, bigger town, smaller town as far as education goes? Enfield, much bigger. Okay. So Enfield's about a little over 5,000 students. Already. Um, about 11 schools slash programs, whether they're in their own buildings or not, um, as compared to Old Saybrook, which is around 1,000 kids total in three schools, as you know. Right. So um, about an $80 million budget in Enfield as compared to about a $29, $30 million budget in here in Old Saybrook. So much different community, bigger community. Um, it's a border town, not in Rhode Island. Obviously, it's a border town <laughs> with Connecticut, right. uh, with between Connecticut and Massachusetts, right on the border of Springfield. So. Um, different demographics, different community, but uh, at, at the core, great people in both places. Yeah. Now, as far as the school year goes, we're about to start the school year here in a couple of weeks. What are we looking for? We're really excited to finally get our kids back. At least I, I could speak for myself. When I'm speaking with staff over the summertime, everybody, it's kind of like you, you can't wait for everybody to leave and take a breath, and then you <laughs> look around the house after like two or three days, and you... You don't like the quiet, that's exactly. kind of what it's like being a superintendent. Everybody goes and you breathe for a minute, and then after a few days you realize you kind of miss them. So um, you know, next week we're going to be welcoming our students back, um, okay. and our staff is coming back officially on Monday, All right. and everybody's sort of gearing up for the return to have our kids back. It's, it's the one profession, um, and not to knock anyone else's profession, but the one thing that we get that no one else gets is we get the first day of school every single year. Right. So you get to see the kids' faces as they come off the bus. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the one day a year they're excited to be in school, at least most of them, except for right. the little ones. <laughs> um, but our staff is, is usually elated to come back for the first day of school, too. So I can't wait to welcome our kids back. Um, you know, like, like you said earlier, last time we met, I was only here for about two and a half weeks. My school was still in session. Right. So it was kind of a whirlwind coming in the end of a school year and not really knowing anyone. Right. So this is really my first opportunity to really get an you know, a chance to get around our buildings and see kids as much as I can and, and interact with our staff more than just on their way out the door over the end of the year festivities. Now, did you get to meet any staff over the summer? I did. I actually cool. got to meet a lot of staff prior to them leaving in, in small increments. Okay. It was typically at an event because you, you get, we, we refer to like the end of May, early June as award season. Yes. It's usually the best time of year. Right. Um, so I was fortunate where I was able to attend a lot of events um, and get to meet staff and families and kids that way. But I did some sort of tours throughout the buildings, sort of 15 right. minute blocks just to say hi to people and hopefully remember faces and names. But over the summer, believe it or not, and, and this community has been so welcoming to me, People have come in to stop to meet me and, and, you know, block off an hour over the summer to have a cup of coffee and get a chance to know each other a little bit better. So it's been great. Cool. Yeah. Now, you, obviously, you've met Carl Fortuna already. I have. I've met Carl a number of times now since great last guy. time. He is a great guy. He, uh, he introduced me at the Taste of, not the Taste of Old Saber, Celebrate Old Saber. Don't yes. get mad at me. I messed it up. That's that was my first, that was an amazing event. And that was an amazing event. It was warm that day. I was, was there for about an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, we were there. My family and I were there for, <laughs> for a couple of hours, and, and I, having never experienced that before, and Carl said, we're going to come to the stage, we're going to introduce you, and I didn't know what to expect. And he kept telling me to relax, relax, it'll be fine. <laughs> right. And he wasn't kidding. He just went up and said hello, and I, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get along with him just great. He, yeah, he's, a, he's been a great guy. Oh, he's, a good, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a regular on with me, so. Okay. He's probably do for a visit 
Now, as far as the, you guys have staff professional days, Monday and Tuesday before the kids come in? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. What does a staff professional day entail? So it could be anything from departmental. So there's, a, there's some changes coming down for our staff this year. There's a brand new teacher evaluation system. So our staff's gonna need some time to get trained on what that evaluation system's gonna be like. Um, we've got a new reading program, which was state mandated, but we've adopted one here in Old Sabre called ARC. Um, so our staff's gonna have some time to train on that. And annually there's, there's, tr there's trainings that staff have to participate in, um, whether it be things that are mandated through the, throughout the state for right. people's certification. So um, we try to make those professional learning opportunities enriching for our teachers and for our staff um, so that they're as excited to come back and, and, and get really in, into what they love doing and that's making sure our kids succeed the minute they walk through the door on Thursday. Right. Now, can we maybe talk about the programs that have to be in, implemented this year by, for the staff as far as the reading program goes? And sure, so that it's gonna start at the elementary level. We actually had a, a, grade, t, a grade three team working that we piloted it last year. Okay. So it's gonna be implemented for this current um, academic year. All right. But our grade three team at Goodwin spent a lot of time over the summer really getting trained and acclimated on embedding that throughout the, throughout the academic day. Um, for this particular school year. So like I, I've told them, and if they're watching, it's new for everyone. Right. And a lot of times in our line of work, um, things will come down the pike, either through the, you know, s sort of a state mandate or a federal mandate. And it, and it can cause anxiety, especially for teachers who are used to succeeding in their own ways. So the message to the staff that are enduring this new venture this, this time is, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> like we're, we're gonna learn how to do this together. We're gonna make sure that we as central office staff and, and district leadership have been uh, putting in supports throughout the summer so that our teachers feel like the resources and the supports are in place for them in the event they need them as they're trying to implement any of these new programs. Now I'm sure once the school year starts you'll be out there. I don't, I don't assume that you're one of those superintendents who sit, at, sit behind their desk all day. <laughs> you probably want to get out and it's Hang a, out at the schools. It's a great assumption, Pete. No, I, I, that's, that's the worst part of my job is when I'm stuck behind my desk. Um, especially with the last few years, you're stuck behind your desk in a screen on some sort of Zoom meeting. And yeah, those, yeah, right. Those, I'm those, done with those. Yeah, I've had enough of that too. <laughs> Me so, too. Um, I, one of the things that, that I look forward to the most in this job as a whole, especially when you wake up in the morning and you kind of plan out your day, is I try to get into a school at least once a day, okay. multiple times if I can. Um, in a district where I came from that was large, it would right. take me about two weeks to circulate through all our programs. Ooh. Here's going to be a little bit different um, yeah. with only three schools, but I told the teachers, don't get sick of me. I'm not looking over your shoulder. I'm not yeah, spying right. on you. I'm literally not even interested in you. I just want to, nothing reminds you more of why you do this exactly. and going into a classroom and, and watching this, the, the faces of our kids. Exactly. Now, how many, now when you did this in Enfield, how many yeah. schools did you have? So we had... 10 physical buildings and 11 programs, Oof. one that were housed in a different building. So oh, wow. it, it took a while to get around, which was great, so that people didn't think if you were there more than once, they thought something was wrong, <laughs> which wasn't the case. It was just like, get, uh, enjoy the opportunity to visit and to check in. Um, so that'll be a little bit of a, a cultural adjustment for me, only having three, and it's particularly the middle school where I can just walk over at yeah, any point right in time there. now too. So that's, there's a benefit to doing that too. So. I'm hoping as people get to know me a little bit better and realize, no, I'm just here to observe and watch and interact with them and, and our students, then they won't be so anxious if they see, you know, the superintendent walking around the building. They shouldn't be. Exactly. No. Hey, the, the guy, this guy's here again. What, do, what, is, <laughs> yeah, what, been, is, what does he want? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who, who's in trouble? No one's in trouble. <laughs> I'm just there to watch. I'm just there to interact <laughs> with the kids. So. Who, who's in trouble? What did I do? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Everybody's fine. It's just yeah. Uh, no, I'm, no. No. It's no. really it's it's selfish on my part. This is, you know, anybody can as I tell this to staff members all the time. All of us could have chosen to do anything else that right. we wanted to do in life, but we all chose to do this. And the reason right. we chose to do this is because we want to help kids. So, just because my office is not in a school any longer and I'm right. not in front of a classroom anymore, it doesn't mean that I lost that or that desire to be in front of kids and to help kids. So. 
Selfishly, I interrupt. I'm kind of like a grandparent. I get to go in, get them all riled up, and leave. Because <laughs> our teachers sometimes get annoyed at me at that, but if they understand it's all coming from a good place, it usually works out. Now, as far as budgetary goes, the difference between Enfield budget and Old Sanford budget, yeah. probably a substantial so substantially, amount. Substantially, <laughs> yeah, about somewhere in that $50 million range. Ah. So it's a, it's a big difference. Right. Um, but again, it's, it's a larger system. It's, there's obviously more things that are contractually tied to having a district that size. Right. Uh, and the needs of the community are different. So it's a, it's a much different demographic than it is here in Old Saybrook. Um, you know, when it comes to the percentages of kids on free and reduced lunch, special education, mm -hmm. they're much greater than, in Enfield than they are in Old Saybrook, which right. have a cost associated with that as well. So it's a, it's a different environment, but like anywhere else, School budgets are always a hot topic, and um, I can say, and I've never met a superintendent who thought they had too much money, because <laughs> we can always find something good to do for, to do with extra fundings for kids. So um, it's a challenge everywhere, but it, it's something that I've, I've learned in my brief period of time here that the community is extremely supportive of its schools. So now, how now how well do you work with everybody up at the Capitol and everybody up at the state education? Well, it depends who you ask. Okay. No, I'm, okay. I'm kidding. I actually, I've worked with, uh, with Commissioner Russell Tucker on a number of issues. Um, she's a wonderful commissioner. She's a wonderful person. Is she? I've gotten to know her very, pretty well over the last couple of years. Um, a lot of people in the State Department of Ed office that I've had an opportunity to work with and, and interact with, uh, some of which are, there are colleagues in other districts that have moved on to the state. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll say about our commissioner is every time I've called, she's returned the call. And that's, that's really all you can ask for as a superintendent. She's, you know, we look at it from our perspective of, you know, I've got, I've got three schools that I have to worry about. Right. She has 169 towns that mm -hmm. she has to worry about, so I understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and also she answers to a different level as far as the State Board of Education and ultimately the governor. Right. Um, whereas we just answer to, you know, obviously the, the Board of Education in Old Saybrook. So, um, she's, she's always been very supportive. Anytime I've asked her, even if she couldn't say yes, she always listened. So right. I've had a, a very good rapport and, and a relationship. She's a, she's a wonderful person. Would you mind sticking around for another segment? Sure. All right, we'll be right back. For decades, I've taught you everything I know. How to safely build a fire. And how to control the flames. But I can only teach wildfire prevention. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti, sitting here with Chris Struzik, who's the old Saybrook Superintendent of Schools. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. All right, so we talked in the first segment about the school, the school year about to begin here in about a week and a half or so. What are your goals for the upcoming school year? So we are currently entering the fourth year of the district strategic plan, which was adopted not only by the Board of Education, but obviously with the support of the community from stakeholders all around. Um, so right now we're in the process of actually developing what our goals for this particular year are going to be based upon the accomplishments during year three of the strategic plan. Okay. Um, and one of the things we have to learn in our line of work is sometimes our you know, our goals have to be a bit fluid because mm -hmm. we're talking about kids. Right. And we're talking about human beings and, and maybe where our kids were and where they need to be could, could differentiate at times. Just take a look at over the last five years. You know, kids who came into kindergarten five years ago are a lot different than they are now right. based on the world that we live in. So, so we have to be ready to adapt. Uh, we have to be ready to be a bit fluid. So we're actually spent some, a lot of time over the summer starting that, that conversation. We're going to start that conversation with our staff on Monday. 
Ah. Because we want to make sure that it's not just me saying this is what we're going to do. Right. But this is something that everyone who's has a, a stake in this, including the community, which has supported the district strategic plan, mm -hmm. um, has a say in where we go from there. So what have our successes been, which there have been a lot, um, and, and what can we improve on, which in our line, there's always something to improve on. Right. But at the, the, the important piece is remembering what's at our core, and at our core it should, should always be, um, you know, what's in the best interest of our kids. Now, can we maybe explain a little bit about the strategic plan, exactly what it is and how it works? Sure. So about, well, it was a little over five years ago, so I wasn't part of that. Right. Um, the, the, the district, along with the Board of Education, um, got together a stakeholder group from board members, administrators, parents, teachers, staff members, community members, to, to develop where the district wanted to go over the next five-year period. Um, and it's really centered around three pillars. Right. And the first pillar, obviously, being equity second pillar being high quality instruction, and the third pillar being a safe and supportive learning environment for kids. Right. So underneath those pillars are sort of the action steps and the theories of action behind each of those goals. So during the first three years, the district set aside, or set apart what they were going to do under those three directions of the, of the master plan. Right. And we were able to accomplish a lot of that, that initial feedback that we had sort of set out to do, you know, obviously prior to my time. Right. Um, what when you need to do when you get into that fourth and fifth year is to reassess where are we you know where we set out on this journey because don't forget that the plan was developed five years ago yeah is this still relevant which we believe it is and more importantly where do we want to go not only for the next two years of the plan but we really have to start thinking about what's the next five-year plan going to look like right so we're, we're starting to have those conversations now and I actually had the superintendent in Brantford on here recently and he was raving about their culinary arts program okay. in North Brantford. It's, so we do have a culinary arts program. Okay. Um, now I'm, I'm a bit spoiled because as we said in the first segment, I came from a much larger district yes. um, that had the benefit of building a brand new high school. And in the high school, we were actually uh -huh. able to build a commercial kitchen for our culinary students to perform, to, to not just use as a class, um, but we also had uh, nationally ranking culinary competitions that our kids appealed to. Really? So I was completely spoiled with this brand <laughs> new kitchen that I walked into <laughs> and our chef who was, who was also our culinary teacher. A little bit of a smaller scale here in, in Old Saybrook, but what, right. I'm, I'm, what I've learned in the three weeks I was here when kids were here, uh, there's a lot of pride in our culinary program here. We do a lot of great work in our, our family consumer science wing. So, um, that that's something that I, is is near and dear because I was able to see that from its infancy where I came from, um, but I was again came in at the tail end of the year when, right, you almost have to shut some of that stuff down to get ready for finals, and I wasn't able to really experience everything. But I'm really looking forward to it this year. I was going to say they were, the North Brantford superintendent was also letting us know about the way that their food service and their cafeteria is run. It's a pretty impressive. It, it is. One of the things that you talked about strategic planning and mm -hmm. where we want to go, one of the things that we're having conversations about, and again, it's early, right. is what are some of the things that we want our kids to participate in right. that could expand into the community? Yes. So let's say use the culinary program as an example. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things I've experienced that I'm not quite sure if we're at the capacity now to do that, but having our kids running their own catering company. Okay. Let's say for staff members. So on Friday afternoons, kids will make prepared meals. Staff members can buy it. And nowadays, you just do it on, and I don't know how to use any of this stuff, Venmo and all that. Right. And they and actually have staff members buy meals for the weekends that our kids produced and, and, and send them home with. We've had any kind of district type events. And if we were having you know a breakfast meeting with superintendents from the area, our yep. kids would host it. Our kids would serve the, you know, create all the, the food or the breakfast or whatever the dish may be. And those are things that I know they do some stuff that, like that here. Yeah. Those are things that we can expand on and also get out into the community and, and be more involved. And so these are all things that, not my ideas, things nope. that I've been, li one of the things I promised when I got here was I would listen. I know I'm talking a lot now, but you're making me. That's okay. Um, but one of the things that I was, I was adamant about was I'm going to spend a lot of time during my first year just really listening and taking in. And I've heard a lot about opportunities that we can expand upon for our kids to take part in that really could showcase to the, to the entire community just the great work that our kids are doing. 
Now, in Enfield, did you guys have a TV production class? We did. Ah. Ironically, we had during the initial construction design a built-in studio in the building that unfortunately got scrapped oh, no. throughout the, the building process. And I had a group there similar to what Jan had here that I'm part of called Superin, which is the superintendent's advisory group. And that was the number one complaint I got the first year is we didn't have a TV <laughs> studio. So we actually found a room. We had actually already purchased the equipment. We just didn't have the physical space to have the TV studio. Really? So we created it for them. Not we, we work closely with our town buildings and grounds folks. Right. Um, and our kids had an actual working TV studio cool. in the brand new high school that was part of the planning, didn't quite make it through the construction process, but we were able to recreate that toward, um, about a year into the, the new building projects. Now, do you have something like that in Old Saybrook? So I know that we have morning news in Old yeah. Saybrook. I don't know the extent they do outside of the building. Okay. Again, by the time I got there, everything was kind of shutting down because kids were getting ready for the, the end, end of the, of the year. year. Yep. So there's a lot of unknown uh, <laughs> things that I haven't walked into yet that I'm looking for. I, I do see the morning news. They send those clips out every day and our kids do an amazing job. Um, I actually, we do have a pretty robust student newspaper, okay. um, the Rambler, which one of the interviews when I came here, um, I won't use the young lady's name to embarrass her on TV, but the, when I was interviewed for the paper, I sent her a note saying that was actually a better interview than I've had from other publications that you have to pay for. So we do a wow. great job in our communications, with, particularly with our, with our, our aspiring journalists at, at Old Saber Guys. Oh, cool. I actually saw right, right when you came, one of the local publications featured you as person of the week. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. I see that. Yes. <laughs> yes. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So that was, that was very nice of him. I it was. I put my name in, but. It was. And the funny thing about that is when they nominate you, they don't tell you who nominated you. No, I didn't even ask. <laughs> I just said, I, did I do something wrong? No? Nope. All right. As long nope. as you're not spotlighting me for the yeah, wrong reason. Yeah, no. I, I know the publication very well. And oh. they were, because somebody nominated me a couple of years ago, and I'm like, who nominated me? They were like, it's confidential. We can't tell you. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I did. they mentioned works, that. Works and I, said, I don't, I don't want to know as long as, they, as long as they're not complaining. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what else we've got? We've got some more time left to talk about, talk about what's going on with the upcoming school year, what you guys want to see. Sure. So I, I think the most important thing were that I'm looking forward to, yes. and I'm only speaking for me now is getting to see our kids from start to finish. Um, one of the benefits of coming in at the end of the year is you don't really know anyone. You don't really know the, the beginning. The, you see the culmination of the kids' hard work. So starting at the end of May, I got to see you know, musical performances. I got to see awards nights. I got to see, didn't get a chance to see many athletic events. Um, but I got to see the celebrations around it. And then ultimately it culminates with graduation. And it was right. my first graduation ceremony here in Old Saybrook, which was fantastic. It, 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 it's kind of bittersweet because you don't get an opportunity to know those kids right. and see where they started and see their journey. So the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is not just seeing our kids at their inception and, and watch them grow through the system, but also watching our staff and our faculty grow with them and learn and adapt as our kids move on. So. For me, that's, that's the most important thing is, is this journey starts with, and, and the first day of school, as I said earlier, is something that we only get in this profession every year. Right. You know, we, don't, we don't get bonuses at the end of the year or corporate retreats, but we get to watch their faces come off the bus as kindergartners and preschool, in our case, for the first year. But watching those classes come through and seeing those kids ultimately culminate walking across that stage of graduation, that's the most fulfilling part of the job. Um, and that's the part that only got to see a bit of last year that I'm really looking forward to. But one of the more encouraging parts of that was hearing from staff members, particularly at graduation, right. telling me about you know, the accomplishments of some of our kids, but not having a chance to see it myself and getting looking forward to seeing the next round of class of kids come through and just see all the wonderful things that they're able to do. Now, as far as your legacy goes, what legacy did you leave in Enfield when you came down? It depends who you ask. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I, I hope when I said this to some of my colleagues on, on the way out the door was I never claimed to be perfect. Um, I haven't met anyone who is 
delete that in case my wife watches. Um, <laughs> but I only know how to do this one way, right. and that is just keeping kids at the center of what I do. So I hope my legacy is that I made a difference for a bunch of kids' lives in Enfield. And when I came here, that's exactly what I told the old Saybrook Board of Education is I don't worry too much about legacy. I worry about, you know, and I go, you know, when you go to bed at night, there's only one person looking back at you in the mirror, and I got to answer the question, did I do everything I could to help kids? <laughs> right. And if I did, then, then I'm okay with that. Exactly. Now, as far as this being your first official graduation ceremony, how, right before you came, how was it? It was great. It was actually great. We were we got to surprise the outgoing class last year uh, and brought a special guest. So Superintendent Peruccio came um, and spoke. We actually tagged it. It was like a buddy movie. We actually went up together. <laughs> um, but it was important for her leaving in the middle of the year um, that she got an opportunity to say goodbye to those kids that were that she had seen all the way through the system, like I said earlier. So. Uh, both of us had it. They had dual speakers that 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 evening um, from the superintendent's perspective. Um, but it was great getting to not just see her and, and, right. and hear her, who I have a great deal of respect for, yes. but getting to see how she reacted to seeing those kids again just reminds you why you do this. So, like I said, the 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 experience of my first Old Saber graduation was was fantastic because you really got an opportunity to see the community rally around our kids and our families. But then I got to participate in the parade. Yes. Which is unique to Old Saybrook. I've heard about um, the parade. So I got, I got a, a bird's eye view of the parade. The police chief allowed me to drive with him in the front car of the parade. So I was able to drive around the beach loop um, and then stop right on the corner of, of Main Street. Yep. And as the kids came by, not knowing, because we were in the front, what how the kids were driving around town somewhere in the back of a pickup truck and lawn chairs so yep. I, there was a boat there was a million different really? things that cool. kids were in um but seeing their expression and seeing the kids the, the pride that they had and what they had accomplished and in, in going through town but the outpouring yeah. throughout the community was unlike anything i've seen it's the closest i've ever been to we used to participate in Wreaths Across America. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, sure if you're familiar sure. with that. Sure, oh yeah. Um, Enfield was one community that was chosen every year. So we used to actually drive in the Walmart trucks throughout town and the whole town would come out. This was the closest thing and it was a little bit different because people were outside and the weather's nicer, it's not December. Right. Um, but once we got to Main Street and saw, you know, the firehouses and the, and the big fire trucks in the middle of, middle of the road um, and just the amount of people that came out to celebrate the graduating class was something that'll stick with me for a long time. Cool. Chris Struzik, we're out of time. Oh, but thanks for some thanks time. Thanks for we'll having see, me again. See you soon. All right. Absolutely. All right. On behalf of Chris Struzik, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. And we'll see you next week.